What is intelligence? You will find none here. And where does it begin? Let's find out. Before we do, make sure to slap one of these and click one of these. Humans are proud of a lot of things, mm -hmm. from particle accelerators to poetry to Pokemon. All of them made possible because of something humans value extremely highly, intelligence. Yeah. We think of intelligence as a trait, like height or strength, but when we try to define it, things get fuzzy. In a nutshell, intelligence is a mechanism to solve problems, especially mm -hmm. the problem of staying alive, which involves finding food and shelter, the biggest problem of all, staying alive. <laughs> oh, and reproducing. Fighting sexual competitors or fleeing from predators. Intelligence is not a single thing. It includes the ability to gather knowledge, to learn, be creative, form strategies, or engage in critical thinking. I would argue that a hefty requirement of intelligence would be the ability to identify and solve problems. In my mind, at least, if you can at least do those two things, it's at least some form of intelligence. It manifests itself in a huge variety of behaviors. No! From hardwired no. or instinct-like reactions to different degrees oh. of learning to some sort of awareness. But not... You ever see that video where uh, it's on TikTok or whatever and the guy takes the cube and he's got one of those little puzzle boxes here? Yeah, and he, he takes that and he... Oh, the square goes in the square hole, and the rectangle goes in the re in the square hole, and the oval goes in the square hole. <laughs> I watched that, and it just ruined my entire childhood. <laughs> Degrees of learning to some sort of awareness. But not all scientists agree where it begins, or what even should count as intelligence. To make this even more complicated, intelligence is also connected to consciousness, since awareness is helpful for problem solving. But we're exploring consciousness in other videos, so today, we'll leave it aside. Oh, we'll have to check that one out for sure. But, interesting point though, is consciousness required for intelligence? And is consciousness and self-awareness different things? I would say yes, for sure. 100% they're different. Self-awareness, you're aware of yourself, you're aware that the environment is different from you, and you're aware that others are different from you. But you're also aware of the constriction that you cannot experience anything other than yourself. And therefore, anything external of yourself could be totally fake, and you have no way of ever proving it. But now, consciousness, on the other hand, is, in my definition, something that can observe and interact with its environment, with emphasis on the observe. Something that can experience the environment. Okay, intelligence isn't exactly clear-cut, so maybe we can think of it as more like a flexible set of skills. A toolbox. Basic tools. The most basic tools in the intelligence toolbox are the ability to gather information, to mm -hmm. save it, and to use it to learn. Information about the world is gathered through senses such as vision, sound, smell, touch, or taste, and helps us navigate and react to the external world appropriately. But living things also need to keep track of the state of their own bodies, monitoring things like hunger and fatigue. This reminds me a lot of the video game Spore. If you ever played that, that animation 100% just reminds me of a game of Spore. <laughs> the animals in Spore are just so derpy and flung all over the place, and I am about 99% sure that this is supposed to be a Spore reference. Information is the basis of action for all living things, and without it, you're at the mercy of your surroundings, unable to react appropriately or flexibly. Information is much more powerful if we can keep and save it. So the second tool is memory. Mm -hmm. Memory is the ability to save and recall information so a living being doesn't have to start from scratch every time it perceives something relevant. Memories can be about events, places and associations, but also behaviors like hunting or foraging methods. Mm -hmm. Some of these, like flying, have to be repeated over and over until they're mastered. This is what we call learning, mm -hmm. the process of putting together a sequence of thoughts or actions. 
basically a string of repeatable behaviors that can be varied and adapted. These three tools enable seemingly stupid creatures to act in surprisingly intelligent ways. It's like those lab tests where they test on the rats and they give them like a maze and they have to navigate the maze. And within the maze, there's a treat at the end, a piece of cheese or whatnot that the rat or mouse wants. Along the way, there's also little electrodes that will shock it if it touches them. And the rat or the mouse can make its way through this maze. And after a little bit of trial and error, it knows not to touch the electrode anymore and will actively avoid it. Now it can still smell the cheese and it deduces by itself that there must be a way to get to the cheese. So it will actually memorize its way and find its way through the maze, avoiding the electrodes as it goes. So that's definitely a form of intelligence there based on this criteria, which I would agree with 100%. What's really interesting though, is this type of criteria specifically excludes cellular behavior, I feel. Because cells, they don't necessarily get information, they don't necessarily memorize things or learn things. It's all chemical interactions, it's all chemistry. But at what point, and I think that might be the point of this video, at what point do you draw the line? Because at the end of the day, it's all chemistry. <laughs> Our entire brain function is chemistry. So where do you draw that line of intelligent versus just a chemical reaction? Because intelligence basically is just sophisticated and complicated chemical reactions layered and layered and layered and layered over and over again on top of each other, in my opinion. The acellular slime mold, which is basically just a single huge slimy cell, shows behavior similar to an animal with a simple brain. When put in a maze with food at one end, the slime mold explores its surroundings and marks its path with slime trails, sort of smearing memories on the ground. As it continues exploring, it avoids the marked pathways and finds its way to the food. Instead of blindly getting stuck in dead ends, the slime mold adapts its behavior to save time and effort. Scary. This behavior is hardwired, and scientists can't agree if that's intelligent, although it does give the slime mold a certain advantage. It's hardwired because it's a chemical reaction. It's not true intelligence, I would argue. But once again, it all comes down to definition. If intelligence is chemical reactions, at what complexity level does chemical reactions become intelligent? Bees are an example of more adaptive smart behavior. Scientists trained bumblebees to move a colored ball into a goalpost for a sugar reward. Not only were the bees very skillful at this behavior, which isn't natural to them, they got more efficient over time. Hmm. When several balls were available, bees chose the ball that lay closest to the goal, even if it was a different color than the ball they were trained with. For more challenging problems, we need even more flex. Can bees see colors or see the same colors that we can? Could it actually differentiate between the two balls, I guess is my question, when it said that it was a different color. We can't assume that they have the same vision as us and interpret the same color spectrum that we do. As a matter of fact, I would argue it's almost certain that they experience a different color spectrum than us. Flexibility. For more challenging problems, we need even more flexibility. Fancier tools. Building on the basic tools, more complex animals have a wider range of problems they can solve. They can memorize all kinds of associations, connections, and mechanical tricks. We'll call this tool the library of knowledge. Take raccoons. Their favorite kind of food is human food. Their approach to getting hold of such treats depends upon an assortment of theoretical and practical skills that makes them master burglars. Nature's ninja. <laughs> I love raccoons. I mean, not at my house, but anywhere else, they're pretty cool. Able to open windows or pick locks. In a study, raccoons were given boxes secured with different kinds of locks, like latches, bolts, plugs, or push bars. They needed less than 10 attempts to figure out how to open each box. Even when different locks were put together into increasingly difficult combinations that had to be solved in the right order and with different amounts of strength. 
A year later, the raccoons still remembered how to open the boxes and were as fast as when they had first solved the puzzle. Raccoons are smart as can be. You cannot keep them out of anything. If they are in your neighborhood and they smell food that they want, they are getting in. That's just end of story. That's the end of the story. You can't do anything else about it. They're getting in. Just say goodbye to whatever that was. Beyond our library of associations and skills, the most impressive tool in our box is creativity, mm -hmm. a sort of mental duct tape. Being creative means producing something new and valuable from apparently unrelated things. In the context of intelligence, this means making new and unusual connections, pairing input with memories and skills to come up with a unique solution to a problem. In another raccoon I'm so disappointed that they didn't play the Zelda chest opening sound there. I don't know why. I was just really expecting that. And they didn't do it. And I'm really sad about it. Study, researchers showed the animals that by dropping pebbles into a water tank, they could raise the water level enough to reach a marshmallow floating at the top. One raccoon came up with a much better solution. It tipped the <laughs> tub over. Another facet of creativity is applying a new resource to a task, physical tools like primates that use sticks to fish for termites in trees, or some octopuses which assemble collected coconut mm. shells around themselves as a sort of portable armor to hide from enemies. <laughs> Collecting materials for later use is connected to an even more advanced dimension of problem solving, planning. Planning means considering the activities required for a desired goal and putting them together in a plan. When unforeseen circumstances and new possibilities present themselves, they need to be assessed according to whether they match the plan or not. An example of this intelligent behavior is hoarding food to eat it later. This is an instinctive behavior in squirrels. But even though hiding food comes instinctively to them, they still need to use advanced thinking skills to make the best decisions. Squirrels examine every nut and weigh the time and effort it would take to hide it against the benefits they would get from each one. Hmm. Damaged or low-fat nuts are eaten right away, while nuts that still need to ripen go on the stockpile. Ah. Squirrels also pretend to bury nuts when they feel watched. These empty caches distract rivals from their real treasure. This is pretty advanced strategizing because to make a plan to distract someone else, you first have to be aware that there are others like you that want the same things. The more Squirrels are ridiculously intelligent, okay? We have, where I live, a squirrel problem where the squirrels just get into everything. I cannot keep them out. There's nothing I can do to keep them out of my trash. I've tried everything under the sun. There's nothing I can do. I've gotten even those super big, heavy, heavy, heavy duty garbage cans and they started chewing through it. It's really, really, really thick and hard plastic. So then I read online that squirrels don't like hot things, like hot sauce. So I covered up the area that was uh, being chewed on. And I don't know how, but they still chewed through it and they still got into my garbage. I've tried locking it in rooms. They've gotten through windows. They've jimmied through little cracks in, in, in doors. They, uh, I can't keep them out of my garbage, no matter what. Ah! The more complex the problem, the more tools are needed in combination to solve it. So the more tools there are, the more flexibility a being has to solve the challenges life throws at them. But even for complex problems, each animal's individual situation is what counts. Squirrels are omnivores that defend their territories fiercely. For them, it makes sense to remember where there's food in different locations and trick their enemies to improve their chances of survival. Sheep don't have any such refined tricks up their sleeve, but they don't need to. They are grazers and live in flocks. The skills relevant to them are social. They recognize and remember many different sheep and even humans for years. A completely different skill. Evolving and retaining a complex set of mental abilities they might never use would be a waste of resources for them. Humans went the opposite way and invested in an unusually diverse intelligence toolkit. While this was helpful, by accident we added another set of tools on top, culture. No single person. Majora's Mask, I saw it. <laughs> 
You thought you could sneak it by me, Kurzgesagt. You thought you could and you almost did, but I caught it. Some ...could ever build a space rocket or particle accelerator. But thanks to our ability to work together and to share knowledge across generations, we can overcome challenges beyond any single individual's ability. This allowed us to shape the planet to our liking. We also created new problems in the process, Sudoku, tax forms, string theory, but also rapid climate change and antibiotic resistance. To solve these, we'll need to look past short-term survival and think about the distant future. Mm -hmm. We have the toolbox. We just need to use it. What a great video this was. One thing that I want to chat about just a little bit here. Don't like how the idea and definition of intelligence is not extremely well defined within the scientific community. At least as far as I'm aware. There's a lot of different definitions of it. A lot of people have a slightly different definition of what it is. It's not something that we have a detailed, concise consensus on. I think it's safe to say that anything that uses external tools is intelligent. If it's using a, a stick, a rock or something to smash an acorn, like you could smash that like button, then it's intelligent. But the biggest question that remains is at what point, where do you draw that line? Here is chemical reactions and here is intelligence. Where is that line? How do we define that? And then how do we all agree on that? That's the difficult, tricky part. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good day.